Welcome to today's edition of Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and coming up next, Rabbi Schneider will present a message titled More Than Wafers and Wine. Over the years, communion has come to mean different things to different people. But what does the Bible tell us about this sacred and holy act? Well, that's the topic that Rabbi Schneider is going to address today. He's urging us to deepen our relationship with the Father by learning to submit to His Word and His will. This message comes from our study on the mysteries in the Gospel of John. And to download Rabbi's study guide, visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Now, here's Rabbi Schneider. I want to go straight away now into the 53rd verse of John chapter 6. And Yeshua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in yourself. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. This is part of what we call communion. We take the bread and we break it. This is the flesh. This is the body of Jesus. This is a way of saying we're receiving you into ourself. We eat your flesh. We take your body, Jesus, into our life. We break that matzah or that bread and we ingest it symbolically declaring that we receive you, Jesus. And then we take the juice or the wine. That's the blood of Jesus in communion, right? And we drink it. We eat your flesh and we drink your blood. But what does it practically mean to eat his flesh and drink his blood? It means to receive him. Yeshua said, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. If any man opens and receives me, invites me in, I will sup with him, dine with him, and he with me which takes us to this verse right here. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. It's the same concept that Yeshua speaks of in the book of Revelation when he says, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you receive me and invite me in, I'm going to abide in you. We'll sup together. And I want to talk about how this relates to you every day. You see, God's spirit is a speaking spirit. This is why in the book of Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit, when the Ruach HaKodesh was given in Acts chapter 2 to the church, he manifested himself above the disciples' head as a tongue. A tongue is a speaking oracle. Tongues are used to speak. Why did the Lord choose to reveal himself when he gave the church his spirit as a tongue of fire? Because he was declaring that the mission and purpose of the Holy Spirit is to communicate to us the things of God. The Holy Spirit imparts to us the essence of God through speaking to us, whether it's in our heart through intuition, whether it's by highlighting and illuminating the words of God that we read in Scripture, whether it's speaking to us in a vision or a dream at night, whether it's him speaking to us through circumstances, through a friend or loved one, the point is the Holy Spirit's purpose is to speak to you and to communicate to you the things of Hashem, the things of God. Jesus said he would send forth his spirit and his spirit would take the things of him and communicate those things to us. So what am I driving at? What I am driving at, beloved one, is that the Holy Spirit is continually, night and day, communicating with you and I. Now, granted, 
we're not always going to be conscious of this, but the Holy Spirit, he's living. He's alive. He's not ever sleeping. And his purpose is to communicate the things of God to us. He takes of Yeshua, imparts them or communicates them to us. What we need to do is to develop an awareness of the Spirit's voice, an awareness of the Spirit's witness, because a lot of times the voice of the Spirit, it's not an audible word. It's oftentimes not a sentence, although it can be. It can be a word. It can be a sentence. But oftentimes the Holy Spirit is communicating to us through a simple, gentle witness in our soul, in our heart. If we were paying attention, we would know whether something is right to do or not to do. And I'm not even talking about whether it's morally right or not. I'm not talking about whether it's a good thing morally or a bad thing morally. I'm talking about whether it's the right thing for us to do at that time to abide in the Lord. In other words, Lord, I'm working now on this business transaction. Should I make this phone call in relationship to this business transaction or should I just wait on you? And what you can do, you can feel what's the right thing to do. You're dealing with a health issue. Lord, should I go to the doctor? Should I take that prescription? Or should I just wait on you and trust you? And I'm not saying that the Lord would not use doctors or medication. I'm just saying that we have to be paying attention to the Holy Spirit to know in every situation, what's the Lord's leading. Sometimes he wants to use a doctor or a medicine. Sometimes he just wants you to trust him without going to a doctor or without taking medicine. But we want to abide in him rather than just being on autopilot, not even looking to him for counsel and just doing what we think we should do. How do we handle relationships? Does the Lord want us to be in relationship with this person? Does he want us to get closer to this person? Or does he want us to draw back with this relationship? How do you know? The Holy Spirit, beloved, will communicate to you. And oftentimes, it's simply through a witness in your heart. We need to be paying attention. So Jesus is saying, if we eat his flesh and drink his blood... And part of eating his flesh and drinking his blood is looking to him to receive wisdom from him and direction from him in every area of our life. And when we're looking to him to receive his will and his direction, then we abide in him. This is what Jesus is saying here. Are we eating his flesh and drinking his blood, living from his life, from his mind, or are we just going about life independently, doing whatever we think in the natural is the best? But it goes even deeper than this. Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in yourself for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. A lot of this has to do with obedience. You see, oftentimes in life, Jesus is asking us to do the hard thing. Yeshua said, Unless you pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But many of us will not deny ourselves. We won't be obedient. We just want to be comfortable. We just want to feed the flesh. We will not open up to hear his voice because we're afraid of what it might be and we don't want to do what we think he might want us to do. So we don't eat his flesh. We don't drink his blood. We close our heart off. We close our spirit off. We close our mind off so we can just do what we want to do rather than dying to ourselves. even as he picked up the cross, denied himself unto death. Rather than dying to ourselves, we stay in the stubbornness of our own flesh. But Jesus is saying, unless you do my will, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, this involves doing his will. Are we willing to let the Holy Spirit in deeper and deeper, cutting in through the center of our heart till we're circumcised unto the Father? So once again, what am I saying? Let's say you're dealing with a food addiction. Are you willing 
to eat his flesh and drink his blood and do his will and deny yourself through self-discipline and the power that the Holy Spirit will give you to exercise self-discipline and come under his lordship to master your body. Eating his flesh and drinking his blood involves allowing the Holy Spirit to circumcise our hearts so that we will come under his lordship, submit to him, and do his will. Yeshua said to his disciples, I have food that you know not of. My food, so remember Jesus is saying here in John 6, we need to eat his flesh and drink his blood. That's food. Jesus said to his disciples about himself, I have food that you know not of. My food, he said, is to do the will of him who sent me. So Jesus' food, that which he was eating, was doing the will of his father, and he did the will of his father by becoming obedient, even to the point of death. Will you and I allow the Lord to break our hearts so that we no longer belong to ourselves, but we surrender to his lordship to become his? Jesus wants to keep on breaking in to our lives. He wants to keep breaking into your life and my life. And this involves, beloved, pulling ourselves out of the world, opening up to hear his voice, and then saying yes to him and obeying him. Many of us are trapped in laziness, slothfulness, passiveness, and inactivity in the spirit. We're weak. Jesus wants to break in and bring us into obedience where we'll be made strong. Will you and I eat his flesh, and drink his blood. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Schneider. And as Christians, discerning God's voice amongst life's conflicting voices is challenging. And that's why Rabbi Schneider has created a free, powerful new talk, a guide to hearing God's voice. He'll equip you with tools so you can clearly know when God is speaking. Go to myfreegift.com forward slash hearing and get your free copy today. Did you know that this ministry is all about preparing the way for the inevitable return of King Jesus? Well, it's true, and we'd love for you to partner with us in this life-changing mission today. Together, we will change lives, not just locally, but all over the world. To support this team, call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. Or you can visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And now here's Rabbi Schneider. I don't know what the Lord may be speaking to you about right now. I don't know what area of your life the Lord's been dealing with. I used earlier in the broadcast today, I talked about people that are in bondage to food. I mean, it's all over the way. How do we get up and we preach the power of the word when we're like 150 pounds overweight? And so I want to illustrate in my own life sharing with you, I had the same situation going on with me. I was 40 pounds overweight. It was hard for me to bend down and tie my shoe. It really was. I could hardly bend over and tie my shoe. And I love sweets. And I love pastries and cookies and candy. And I was obedient to God in so many areas of my life. But when it came to sweets and food, I literally was keeping God over here. It was like I was saying, Lord, you can speak to me, but don't say anything to me about that because I'm not ready to obey you in that area of my life yet. And so that's how some of us are as it relates to food. You're not allowing the Lord to have lordship over you in that area of your life. But the thing is, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about something, and he's been speaking to us and we're resisting his voice, you know what happens? It creates a break in fellowship and in our relationship with God. 
Conversely, the opposite is true. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to us and we yield to him, we say yes to him, we obey him, we pick up our cross and we do what he tells us to do, then we're eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And what happens as a result? Jesus said, you will abide in me and I in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. And so those of us that are hungry to experience a deeper intimacy and a deeper fellowship with God, those of us that are hungry to see God's promises apprehended in our own life, to see Jesus' promises to set us free, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Jesus said, my joy I give to you. If we're hungry to experience his joy, his peace, his power, his goodness, and the fellowship that brings deliverance to our lives, then what we have to do is we have to submit to obey him. We have to, beloved ones, eat his flesh and drink his blood because there's no way around the cross. Remember, Jesus said, unless you pick up your cross, that's obedience, unless you pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow me, you cannot be my disciples. And so, beloved, this verse right here, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, it has very real, meaningful, personal, now application for you and I every single day. Jesus continues there. He says, as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread referring to himself, which came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus had three primary groups of followers. I guess you could even say four. He had the people that followed him because he gave them something to eat, right? He multiplied the fish. He multiplied the loaves of bread. There were people that flocked to him just because he was feeding them. He gave them something material to eat. He took care of their very fleshly needs. Some people attached themselves to him for that reason. Then there were others that followed him because they enjoyed the fascinating. They liked seeing the miracles. Many of those people that followed him at that level, they didn't stick with them. They were like the people that go from this meeting looking for the spectacular to that meeting looking to the spectacular, listening to this prophecy about what's going to happen this year from the so-called prophet, going to the next YouTube video, hear what that so-and-so prophet is saying about what's going to happen this year. People that are looking for the spectacular, they like the miracles. Then there were people that Jesus called his disciples. They began to follow him and they were moving forward in their journey with God. Jesus said to those people, if you continue, get this now, if you continue, Jesus said, in my word, then you're truly disciples of mine. So this next group were the real disciples. Those that didn't just taste of the kingdom of God, but they continued in his word. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you're truly my disciples. And then, beloved, there were the true disciples. Then there were the 12 apostles. And then there were the three, Peter, James, and John. So once again, I want to ask you, which group will you be in? Will you be the people that just look to Jesus so he can pay your bills or heal you? and go no further? Or will you be like the people that just were fascinated by the miracles? You go from this prophecy to this prophecy? Or will you be like the people that went a bit further? You began to apply some of the teachings of Jesus to your life, but you're not sold out. Then there was the next group that continued in his word. He said, you are my disciple. And from there we go to the 12 that had a special relationship with him, and finally to the three that were most intimate with them, Peter, James, and John. Only you can choose how close you're going to be. Will you eat his flesh and drink his blood, beloved one? Will you let him in to the core of your being and the center of your heart? Jesus is knocking. He wants you to open the door and let him in. 
If you've never embraced Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to do that today, visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Click the ministry tab and then click Find Jesus. We're going to lead you through a simple prayer of salvation. And then if you would like to fill out the form below it, we'd love to hear from you. And when you do, we'll send you a couple of books that are designed to help guide you on this journey. They're free of charge as our way of saying, welcome to the family of God. And whether you're new to this ministry or you're a longtime listener, if you want to send us a testimony of how the ministry is making an impact in your life, we'd love to hear from you too. Just send us a testimony at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Now, it's our mission to reach the world with the good news of Jesus. And now here's Rabbi to share a bit more about our vision to do just that. Wow, the gospel needs to continue to go forth with a clarion call. Paul spoke about the word needing to go forth like a trumpet, like a bugle sound, so that people could clearly hear it and recognize it. We're living in a time where the gospel in many fronts is no longer clearly being preached. What is happening, as you well may know, beloved, is that there's another gospel being preached that Paul warned about in advance needs to be rejected. I want to thank you that believe in this ministry and are financially supporting it. Without your help, I can't continue to, to preach the good news of King Jesus all over the world. If you're being blessed by this ministry, if you believe in it, if the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with your heart right now that other people need to hear it, I want to ask you if you've never done so before, would you please make a financial offering to the Lord through this ministry? I need your help. Without your help, I can't do it. Together, beloved, we're making a difference and souls are being saved. To give a gift of any amount today, just go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or give over the phone when you dial 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. You can also send your check in the mail to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, PO Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. And as a token of our appreciation for your generosity, we want to make sure that you receive Rabbi Schneider's message of the month. It's available as a digital download. And then for our new monthly partners, we'll send you an additional token of appreciation, an authentic handcrafted shofar that's made in Israel. And displaying this beautiful instrument in your home during the Passover season, which begins next week at sunset on April the 22nd and ends at nightfall on the 30th, is a great way to share your faith with friends and family. Plus, it's also a great way to start a conversation about the Jewish roots of our Christian faith. So reach out right now. We're online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com or once again, you can speak with one of our team members when you call 800-777-7835. And then it's our tradition to end each program with a special blessing. And I pray that hearing God's benediction from Rabbi Schneider will inspire and comfort you as you go about your day. Blessings trump curses. And in the book of Numbers chapter 6, we find the ironic blessing that God commanded Moses' brother Aaron, the high priest, to speak over the children of Israel. There's power in blessing, beloved ones. So take part in receiving Father's blessing upon your life today. Yavah Yahweh Ya'er Yahweh Panave Lecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panave Lecha Veasem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance. And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. 
Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries, and I'm your host, Dustin Roberts. Join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider explains how you can tune in to God's frequency. That's Thursday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.